All right, welcome back. We are discussing chapter three, lesson four, perpendicular lines. So before we get started with the lesson today, we're gonna do a warm up. So for one and two, you're gonna solve the inequalities. For three and four, you're gonna solve the equation. And then for prob five, you're going to solve the system of equations. So here's my friend, the pause dragon. Remember you to pause, go ahead and work out all of those problems, and when you get done, press play, and we will go over the answers together. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're back, let's see how you did. So the first thing I'm gonna try to do is get x by itself with this inequality. Remember this inequality, you just kind of do the same things as if this was a, an, an equation. Um, the only thing that's different between equations and inequalities as far as solving them is that whenever you uh, multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip that sign, okay? Otherwise, it's you can think about it just the same as um, solving an equation. So here, we're going to get x by itself, so we're going to add 5 to both sides, which means we end up with x is less than 8 plus 5 is 13. So if you got that one right, awesome job. Let's move on here. Um, here we have variables on different sides of the inequality sign. And so I wanna get them on the same side. Usually I say move the smaller, but this X over here is already isolated on this side of the inequality. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the negative three X to both sides. That cancels, we're left with one. And X minus three um, X would be a negative two X. Okay, we wanna get x by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by negative two. And remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip that sign. So we're going to flip it. Negative and a negative are positive. Two divided by two is one. One times x is x. And then we're just left with negative one half right here. And whenever you're dealing with inequalities, you wanna make sure that the, it, the variable is on the left side. So I'm just going to flip it, um, I mean just switch this over here, but make sure that the sign is the same. So um, I have x and I have negative one half, right? But sometimes I really just think this looks kind of like an alligator and so the alligator is like eating the negative one half. So that means the alligator has to continue to eat the negative one half as well. So when you switch the sides, just make sure that the um, inequality sign is facing the right way. So this would be x is less than negative one half. So if you got that one right, awesome job. If not, go ahead and fix your answer so that your notes look exactly like mine. All right, let's move on here. So we're gonna try to get, um, we have five y equals 90, we're gonna get y by itself. So we're gonna use the inverse operation. Five y is the same thing as five times y. So we're gonna divide both sides by five. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times y is y equals, I think 5 goes into 90 18 times. Because 5 goes into 120 times. So, yeah, 18. So if you got that, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, over here on 4, we're trying to get x by itself. So first we're going to get rid of the 15 by using the subtraction property of equality. That cancels. We're left with 5 x equals 75 and then we just this is 5 times x do the inverse operation of multiplication which would be division um, 5 divided by 5 is 1 1 times x is x and then we end up with um, 15 75 divided by 5 is 15 yes it is okay all right, and then lastly, we're gonna solve this system of equations. So, um, you know, remember when you solve system of equations, you can graph them, you can do substitution, or you can solve them by, um, by elimination. And remember, these both represent lines, right? So this is a line, this is a line, and the point of intersection is where they both intersect, which ends up being an ordered pair with an X and a Y. So when we're solving it, we need to make sure that we find the X and the Y because we're trying to find that point of intersection. So for this, I'm gonna call this equation one and I'm gonna call this equation two. I think that what would be easiest as far as graphing 
um, substitution or elimination would be substitution. Nothing here is like super, super easy, but I see here with equation one that if I solve this for y, which shouldn't be too complicated, um, then I can just substitute it into this equation. So that's what I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and do. So I'm gonna take equation one here, rewrite it, and then just solve it for y, get y by itself. And six divided by six is one, one times y is y, and six goes into nine, um, I don't know, let me see here, so 90 divided by six. Well, I know that three goes into both of those, so I, I, I guess I can simplify that. So three goes into six two times, three goes into 90 30 times, and then there we have it, 30 divided by two is 15. Okay, so we have y equals 15. So this is from all from equation one. So when I figure that out, I'm going to have to substitute in the other equation, which would be equation two. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that. And then I just substitute it in. And eight times 15, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Eight times five is 40. Uh, eight times one is eight plus four is 12. So 120 minus three X equals 90. I'm trying to figure out what X is, so I gotta get rid of this 120. That cancels. I'm pretty sure that this is equal to negative 30. And then just divide both sides by negative three. And we end up with x equals negative and a negative is a positive. 30 divided by 10, three is 10. So there we have it. x equals 10 and y equals 15 is our answer. And if we want to write it as an ordered pair, we could write it as 10. 15 like that. Okay, now we're actually, um, that was our warm up. So that pretty much lets you know that we're gonna be using inequalities, we're gonna be solving inequalities, we're gonna be solving um, equations, and we're also gonna be solving systems of equations within this lesson at some point. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here with the vocabulary. So our first vocabulary term is the a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. So what a perpendicular bisector is, is that is a line that is perpendicular to a segment at the segment's midpoint, okay? So really two characteristics. Number one, it's perpendicular, which means it's going to be 90 degrees, okay? The second thing is that this line intersects this segment at its midpoint, which really means, so a perpendicular bisector, okay? Perpendicular means 90 degrees, right? And then the bisector just means it cuts that segment in half, so that means this side is the same as this. So those two sides are equivalent. That's what a perpendicular bisector is. Okay, so you should probably, this should probably be a flashcard. Okay, so that you get that vocabulary term down, perpendicular bisector kind of has two characteristics. It um, intersects the line with at 90 degrees and it cuts the line in half. Okay, the second thing is the shortest segment from a point to a line is perpendicular to the line. Okay, so let's just think about that for a second. So, okay, we have a line, right? And we have a point here. So what it's stating is that the shortest segment, the shortest segment from a point to a line is making a line that's perpendicular from that point to the line. So, you know, have you ever heard like the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's pretty much the same thing as a point and a line. The shortest distance is a perpendicular line. I mean, you just go straight there. Okay. So this one is the shortest. Um, these are also lines that go from the point to the line, this line. But if you can see when they're not perpendicular, they're actually longer in length, 
right? And this one too, they're longer in length. So anytime for going from a point to a line, it's not perpendicular, it's going to be longer in length than that um, line that is perpendicular from the point to the line, okay? And really this concept right here is what we're going to be using for the first example, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. It says, example one says, um, distance from a point to a line. So here we have a line here, okay? And here's our point. And so for part A, it just says, name the shortest segment from A to line BC. So from A to line BC, we have a segment here, a segment here, and a segment here. Okay, so which one of those is the shortest segment? All right, so if you said that AP is the shortest segment, you would be correct. That is the answer, all right? Um, okay, let's go to part B. So that's A, pretty simple, let's go to part B. It says write and solve an inequality for X. Okay, so the same picture, we have AP. Now, if you notice, this is, this is perpendicular. That's why the line that's perpendicular to this line, that is the shortest one, AP. So basically what that means is if AP is the shortest, then that means everything else, every other line is bigger than AP, okay? So if you notice here, we really only have, um, so this is our line that's perpendicular, okay? And then um, the only other information that they give us is this information right here dealing with AC. So really the inequality that we're gonna write is going to be dealing with AP and AC because those are the only um, like values that they give us. So, um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little zero here, and I'm just going to write down the given information. So here it tells us that AP is equal to 12, and it tells us that AC is equal to X minus 8, and that's given. All right, so now I'm ready to write my inequality. So what I know is I know that AP is the shortest, so I have AP and AC, so AP and AC, and I know that AP is the shortest, that means this one's bigger, so there's my inequality there. AP is less than AC, boom, there you have it. And the reason why you can say this is because AP is the shortest segment. Okay, then we go to two. So then we just substitute in these values. So AP is 12, AC is X minus eight. That's substitution. And then we're just gonna solve for X. So we're gonna get X by itself. So we're gonna add eight to both sides. That's gonna be the addition property of equality, which then leaves us with 12 plus eight, which is 20 is less than, that cancels X, right? Um, so that's just simplifying. And then we're going to um, write the sw um, switch sides and the alligator's eating the X. And we'll call that the symmetric property of inequality. <laughs> it's not an equality, inequality, equality. We'll just say equality. Okay, and there's our answer right there. Perfect, perfect. Oh, could you see it? Right there, okay. Um, so let's just go on to the next example, all right? And I want you to try to do this one on your own. If you wanna refer back to this previous uh, example, um, you are more than welcome to do that. But here's my friend, the pause dragon. Remind you to pause, work out, check it out, example one. And then when you get done, press play and we'll talk it over. Okay, we're back. Check it out. Example one says, name the shortest segment from point A to B, C. Um, and if you remember, the shortest segment is the one that is perpendicular, right? 
So we basically have two values, x minus 5, and then we have this 12 here. And since we know that this is the shortest segment, this one must be bigger. But before we get started with our inequality, let's go ahead and write down all the given information. So I'm going to write down that AB is equal to x minus 5, and I'm going to write down that AC is equal to 12, and that's given. And then let's go ahead and write our inequality. So um, we would say that AB is... Um, less than AC because we know that AB is the shortest segment. Okay? Then we just substitute in the values. Um, for X minus 5, we put that right here. X minus 5 and AC is 12, so that's substitution. And then we're just going to figure out what x is, right? So we add 5 to both sides. Some lovely addition property of equality. And then we have it. That cancels. We're left with x is less than 12 plus 5, which is 17. And that was just um, simplifying. I don't think I put a number here for this one. What, this was, what, 2.5? So there we have it. Oh, whoops. I think I forgot A. Um, name the shortest segment from A to BC. Line BC would be um, segment AB. Boom. There you have it. So if you have got all this right, awesome job. And um, we'll see you in a little bit for example two. If you didn't, make sure you erase and rewrite so your notes look exactly like mine. All right. See you back in a bit.